Hi everybody, welcome to Cake Tastic Cakes. It's Jen and I'm gonna show you today how I made this cookie dough cake, including edible raw cookie dough. And speaking of edible raw cookie dough, we gotta start by making cookie dough and making it edible when raw. <laughs> so what you're gonna do is take two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, I'm just measuring it out right there, and I'm dumping it onto a cookie sheet. We're going to bake the flour, okay? So a lot of people think that the eggs are like, oh, you're gonna get salmonella if you eat raw cookie dough. You got much more of a chance of getting sick from eating raw flour. I used to work in a microbiology lab where we tested raw products and flour was one of them. And I can tell you from firsthand experience, holy cow, it's dirty. It is full of insect and rodent parts. It's a raw product, it's not cleaned in any way. So yeah, we're gonna bake it. I spread it out thin on the cookie sheet and then I'm gonna put it in the oven for 10 minutes at 350 degrees, then take it out, just let it cool. That'll kill the germs. Okay, now to start the cookie dough in the actual mixer, I'm putting two sticks of butter into the mixer that has come to room temperature, so it's been softened. I'm gonna start to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to now add some sugar. I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. This is just regular old white sugar. And I'm also going to add three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. Now, when I make my cookies, I use a light brown sugar, so that's just what I do, but whatever brown sugar you have that you like, go ahead and use it. And also another thing is when you use brown sugar to measure it, you gotta pack it down into your measuring cup. Okay, so there I go, I got three quarters in. Mix, mix, mix. A little time skip, because it's just a lot of mixing. I'm gonna turn it off, scrape my bowl to get all the butter and everything off to the sides because yeah, it sticks and it doesn't get all the way down there the way my mixer is, I don't know. It just doesn't reach all the way at the bottom sometimes. Okay, so I scraped it, put it back on, let it mix for a little bit longer. And now I'm going to add some eggs. I'm gonna add two eggs, one egg at a time. And I am Going to say that if you are uncomfortable doing eggs, just skip the eggs at this part. I don't know, you know, maybe you could use like a little applesauce or something to substitute if you're uncomfortable with the eggs. I am personally not. In America, we have uh, rules that they have to be chemically cleaned and everything, the shells on the outside, so I'm not worried, but do whatever you think is best. I added a teaspoon of vanilla extract and now a teaspoon of baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda. I'm gonna give it all a nice little scrape once again to make sure nothing is sticking to the sides. And now I'm gonna back, go back to our flour. Uh, the flour has come out of the oven. It was in there for 10 minutes, like I said, at 350. I'm going to put it all onto a piece of parchment paper just because it's gonna be easier to handle. So I'm gonna just kind of tapping and scraping, doing whatever <laughs> I can to get it all off. And then I'm just gonna pick it up and very gradually feed the flour into my mix until it's all nice and incorporated. And I apologize for the little feet walking by. This cake was for my son for his birthday. And when you make a cookie dough in my house, there's a lot of vultures that start circling, looking for little scraps and things. So all the dough is mixed in, it all mixed up. I'm gonna go ahead and add my chocolate chips. These are mini chocolate chips. I'm gonna turn it up for just a moment, just to incorporate the chocolate chips. Once it's done mixing, I'm gonna scrape it all off. And now I'm going to Cover it with some parchment paper and put it in the refrigerator for an hour. This is an important step. Please don't skip it because it helps out with the baking later on when we get to that part. Okay, so cover it up, stick it in the fridge. Now I'm gonna show you how I made the buttercream icing. The buttercream icing is also considered cookie dough flavored and you're gonna see why once you, you see the ingredients I put in it. And again, if this is not gonna be up your alley, you can always change it. I start with three sticks of butter. I actually had to go back and make more, so I would say four sticks of butter, softened to room temperature, unsalted. And I add about two cups of powder per stick of butter when I make my icing, so you can you know, gauge it however much you need to make. I added a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a little more of my powdered sugar. There goes that vulture circling again. I'm going to add a little bit of milk when needed. I just used some heavy milk. I, you know, have if you have cream or something, you can use that too. And this is where it gets more cookie dough-ish. I'm adding two tablespoons of molasses. And this is where also, again, I said, if you don't like this flavor, if it's not up your alley, you can always do something different. Just add a little food coloring maybe to make it look the right color, the kind of light shade of brown. But anyway, I added molasses. So there's my little dash of the milk. I'm going to add my second tablespoon right here. 
And by the time I'm all said and done with it, we've already pretty much made a large part of the cookie dough. If you think about it, we've got the molasses and the sugar, which is, you know, like brown sugar. And we've got the butter and we've got the powdered sugar. So all we're missing is flour and eggs and we could make more cookies. But anyway, once I get it all to a nice consistency, put it aside, getting ready for our cake now. Okay, in one bowl, separate bowl, you're going to mix three cups of all-purpose flour. Now I know making cakes, a lot of times you're gonna use cake flour. Not in this situation, okay? There's two teaspoons of baking powder, not baking soda, baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna take a whisk and just mix these up by hand just to incorporate it so it's all mixed together. And then I'm going to just put it aside. And you're gonna see that right there, okay. Now I'm going to take one cup of milk. I should use whole milk, but I only had 1%, so you know what, it worked. I'm gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, give it a little stir, put it aside. There we go. All right, for the actual cake in the mixer now, I'm going to add two cups of granulated sugar into my mixer, and then I'm going to add three sticks of unsalted softened butter. So this, this uses a lot of butter. This is not one of the healthy cakes <laughs> that you worry about your diet with. So the three are gonna go in there. They're kind of mushy, so I've gotta kind of squeeze out the, the remains from the wrappers there. I just do it between my fingers, you know, press down. So once you get them in, you're gonna plug in your little mixer, put your paddle on, and then start mixing. So you're gonna make a nice butter, sugar, mix, <laughs> paste, I don't know what you're gonna call it, but it's gonna be tasty, whatever you're gonna call it. Now, while it's going, we're gonna add three eggs to it. These are three large eggs. I'm cracking them into the one cup just so I can make sure before I add them into the mix that there are no cook, no um, shells or anything like that. And I'm also giving it a little bit of time between eggs when I add them to make sure that they're mixed in before I add the next one. Now, when I got my three eggs in, in there and they're starting to mix up a little bit, I'm going to measure out a half a cup of sour cream or you can use Greek yogurt. And then I'm going to add that to my mix. So it's sticking a little bit, use my spatula, scrape the rest in. Okay, still mixing, we still got that mixer going. We're gonna give it a pause and we're going to scrape it now with the spatula. You can see how um, all that butter and sugar and everything made it very fluffy, kind of um, more like, I don't even know, almost like a buttercream icing really at this point that we're going with. It's very fluffy, almost whipped kind of. So we're gonna keep going with it. Okay, looking good so far. And now we're going to start adding our flour mixture that we put to the side before. I'm going to add about a third of it into the mix and then about half of my milk and vanilla. Give it a chance to mix up a little bit more. And then I'm going to ladle or paddle or spoon in some more of the flour mix. That was a little more than a third, but we're gonna pretend it was a third. While that's going, I'm gonna add the rest of my milk and my vanilla extract mixture. I just didn't wanna add it all in one shot because as you probably have experienced, it splashes up if you're mixing too hard. And once that's incorporated, I'm going to add the rest of my flour mixture. So yes, I'm actually using that Pyrex pour spout for what it's for there. Okay, so I'm gonna give it another couple, you know, minute or so to mix in. I'm going to add in some chocolate chips. These are more of the mini chocolate chips and I add about a cup. So once I get the chocolate chips in, I'm just gonna kind of fold it into place. I realized I didn't wanna mix it, I wanted to just fold them in. Once I folded it a bit, I felt like, you know what, it needs some more. So I went ahead and added some more. And yeah, it, it seemed fine <laughs> that I did that, it didn't seem to matter. Okay, so once you get it all nice and mixed, it's ready to go in the oven, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. These are two eight inch pans that I have here that I have greased and I have parchment paper in the bottom of them. I'm going to put it about halfway full, a little bit more maybe, of my batter. And this is enough batter to make three eight inch cakes. You're gonna see later on, I only ended up with two eight inch cakes because this recipe, when the cakes come out of the oven, they are super fragile and I ended up touching one and it just broke into a thousand pieces and I was mad and I said bad words a lot. <laughs> Fortunately, like I said, it was for my son. So sorry, kid, you get the short end of the stick here. You don't get, you know, the perfect cake. You get the, the what I made out of the cake. Now I took my dough out of the refrigerator here 
And what I'm doing is making little sausage patties, basically, like a Jimmy Dean sausage patty, just a inch or you know, a couple inches wide, not even a half an inch thick. I'm going to make five of them, and I'm going to press them down into the batter so that they're sunken in, you know, so they're not touching the bottom, but they're sunken in. I did it for both of them. You didn't need to see me, you know, do it twice. It's kind of boring. And now I'm taking my spatula and covering them up with the cake batter. If I needed a little extra, which I thought I did here and there, just take a little dab out of your bowl. There you go. Okay, same thing with this one now that they are sunken in. I'm just going to cover them up, make it all nice and level again. If you need any extra to cover it up, oh, there's my hat. Then you can scoop a little bit more. Just make sure you have enough for your third pan. All right, when these come out of the oven, they come out beautifully, okay? They're just like, they're nice. They don't stick to the sides. Look at that. Don't touch them, okay? That was my big mistake. I took them out. I flipped them over. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to like flip this bad boy so it dry, so dry, so it cools the right side up. Mm -mm. Nope, it was a sad day in my house, let me tell you. Although my kids did enjoy eating the broken cake that I made. So I ended up with two tiers instead of three. Now let's just pretend that there are three, Okay. So I'm taking my, my icing that I made. This is the buttercream icing that's really basically molasses flavored, really. And I'm putting a nice layer on. You could see in the center of my cake there that there was that divot taken out of it. This cake stuck to my cooling rack like it was its job in life. <laughs> it, it just didn't want to let go. So it's like you're kind of stuck. If you try to move it, it could shatter into a million pieces or you let it cool and try to move it and you end up with a divot in the center where it just stuck to your to your cooling rack. So I opted for divots. I figured divots are, are less destructive. I can just fill that with icing. Now I've got my cookie dough. I put it to, between two pieces of parchment paper. Taken my big old marble rolling pin there so it's really heavy. So I'm going to apologize now. My camera stand is on my counter. And every time I'm like bam bam with my rolling pin it jiggles a little. So you're getting this is like a 4D immersion video here. So you're welcome. Yes. It's not making you nauseous at all. So I'm rolling it out between the two parchment papers until it's pretty thin, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch thick. And I'm going to peel them apart. It comes off beautifully. I had to patch it a little bit on the edges to make it a proper size because I wanted it to be eight inches in diameter so that I can trace out a circle with my knife just like that. And now what I'm going to do is try really hard not to eat the cookie dough and put that layer of circled dough that I made there on top of my cake. So I just pick it up because it is a nice, you know, cookie dough. It's not going anywhere. I just lay it on, peel it off. There you go. So now you've got this beautiful layer of actual edible cookie dough between your layers of cake. And in theory, there would be two layers of this cookie dough, but with three layers of cake, of course. But we're just, yeah, we're not talking about that anymore. Okay, so there's my next layer of cake. You can't see it, but again, it had a divot in the center where it stuck to my, cook my cooling rack. And so I'm moving on and going to just finish covering this cake up with the rest of the icing. I did find that the amount I made with three sticks of butter was perfect for two layers of cake. I don't think I go heavy handed with the icing. I feel like um, if I had made the third tier and it had come out successfully, that it would have been not enough icing. I would have had to do four sticks of butter. So just a little heads up. So don't make the mistakes I made, you know, don't touch it when it's warm, <laughs> don't touch the cakes when they're warm, and handle them gently when they're cool and you're taking them off, and make extra icing, yes. <laughs> There's all my, all my list of things that went wrong. Now I'm just icing the top like you would any cake. I'm not crumb coating it because I just don't feel like it. I sometimes just do a thick layer on the outside and just spread it carefully. And I gotta say, this recipe was great. It didn't make many crumbs at all. It was really very good like that. It was very forgiving. And I also, you know, in hindsight, having had the cake for my son, I got to actually serve it and cut it. And it was really nice and pretty to cut. It makes a very pretty slice of cake with the different shades and everything. However, if I were to do this again, and I think I will, I really did like the cake, I would not make those little Jimmy Dean patties of cookie dough to put in the cookie dough itself. I probably will next time try making just little balls um, similar to the ones that I'm going to make at the end and just kind of sprinkle those throughout the cake rather than this big section. I'd rather have little, a whole bunch more little sections. Just my preference and, you know, how it came out for me, what I'm thinking about it. But this cooked up beautifully, so really I can't complain. 
Yeah. Except for it falling apart <laughs> and sticking to the cooling rack. I can't complain at all. All right. So anyway, I've smoothed it. I've iced it. It's got icing on the top and sides. It's lovely. I'm taking some more of my mini chocolate chips and I'm pressing them into the bottom edge all around just to create a little chocolate chip border. Because at this point, really, what's a little more sugar and chocolate going to hurt anything? So I went all the way around and it was super boring footage to look at. So I just cut it all out. I'm just taking handfuls and just kind of pouring it on the plate, on the cake plate, and just pressing up against it. And where it sticks, it sticks. And where it doesn't, I just force it to stick. Darn it, you're getting in there. So I just push a little harder. I also realized this would have been a lot easier if I hadn't had the cake in the fridge chilling for a while. Mm -hmm, there's that. Now I am adding a chocolate drizzle to it. This is just a store-bought microwavable chocolate drizzle. You could do a chocolate ganache, which would make it, you know, so much richer and more chocolatey because it's already so lacking in sugar. However, I took the little easy way out of it and I just did this little bit of a chocolate, or excuse me, a black um, melt, black drizzle. I just kind of, as you can see, kind of loop-de-loop, almost like a spider web around the edge because I'm going to fill the center in. You're not going to see it, so save it. Yeah, don't use it. Don't waste it. It doesn't taste that great anyway. All right, I'm using some more of my buttercream in a piping bag with a closed star tip. I just made some little swirly derbies all around the edges there. I'm pouring some more of my mini chocolate chips in the center. This is where I was saying if you do make a chocolate ganache, you could have that across the top and it would look very pretty and be shiny and yummy. However, I'm using chocolate chips. I felt like I had a lot of buttercream left over, so I just put a, piped a few stars between my, my loop-de-loos all around the cake. And it also uh, kind of brought it more to the edge because I kind of feel like I should have um, had my loops closer to the edge of the cake. They were set back a little further than I... I really didn't pay attention to, and I should have. So there you go. Here's your, your dollops and your loop-de-loos. Now I've got a big wad of leftover edible cookie dough, so I'm just tearing it up, sprinkling it around inside the chocolate chips, and I'm also going to take it and make it into, I'm going to count my little dollops there, and I'm going to make them into little balls that I'm going to place on top. So I ended up with 13 little loop-de-loos and I made a whole bunch of balls. I think I made 14 or 15, no? It was more like 15 or 16, I had several extra. And I'm going to take the pretty ones that have the most chocolate chips showing and put them on top. I had some plain ones that you, like you saw me take the one off, like the second one on I put. It didn't have any chocolate chips showing and it was just so much brown on top of the brown that I wanted more contrast in them. I wanted them to stand out a little bit. So I took it off and I substituted it for something else. So yeah, once you put all your little balls around, stick it in the fridge. You know, gotta find the right one because that one wasn't a perfect one. Stick it in the fridge and it will be ready to go. Just take it out at least an hour to an hour and a half before serving and eat the rest of the cookie dough and you're good to go. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please like and subscribe because it really does help me out. I'd also like to know if anybody actually makes this, how your, how your cakes come out, if they break apart or if they're fragile or anything. I would like to know that. So again, please like and subscribe. It does help me out. I've got a lot of other videos out there, so check those out too. And as always, thank you for watching Cake Tastic Cakes.